Restrooms are located in the parish center lobby to the right. We are in need of ministers of hospitality. If you can help, please speak with one of the ministers to sign up. It will, be, it will involve coming earlier to Mass and staying a few minutes later to prepare and sanitize. Supplies are furnished. Adoration for our nation. A nationwide day of prayer, November 3rd. On Election Day, Catholic churches across the country are opening their doors for Eucharistic adoration. We are joining this effort to bring healing, hope, and prayer to our nation through our Lord Jesus. We are asking parishioners to sign up for one hour of adoration between the hours of 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Tuesday, November 3rd. For more information or to sign up for an hour, see the sign-up sheet in the back of the church. We encourage you to do so. All Souls Day is Tuesday, November 2nd. Envelopes are available at the doors of the church, the parish center, and the ministry center for you if you would like to have deceased people remembered at the masses in November. Please return the envelope to the collection box and drop it off at the ministry center during office hours. Our pastor's got a few words to share with you. Thank you, A.J. We were informed this week that one of our Eucharistic ministers tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. We ask you to keep this minister in prayer. They're not hospitalized, but they just uh, tested positively. But in a desire to remain transparent, we wanted to inform you that this minister was at the ministering communion at the 5.30 Mass last Saturday night. So, as well as the week before that, they were the Eucharistic minister at the 11 o'clock Mass. Now, the County of San Diego considers close contact as coming within six feet of someone with COVID for 15 minutes or longer. Well, in the communion line, the minister would not have been near someone for that length of time, since we're all wearing masks and, and sanitizing, as did this minister was wearing a mask and had sanitized beforehand. So there's very little possibility that anyone receiving communion from them would have uh, been in close contact. But we, in, in the spirit of, of transparency, we just wanted to make you aware that that did happen last week at this Mass and the week before at the 5.30 Mass for the same minister. But we, it just reminds us to continue to follow the guidelines of social distancing and wearing a mask whenever we're on church property here. It really is an act of charity toward others. Thank you. And now for our liturgy. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father Sheehan and assisting Ms. Deacon Dreckenberg. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. It's great to see you all here this evening and you're all most welcome. We also welcome those following the celebration and live streaming. It's great that we can celebrate the Eucharist together. Today's gospel, we hear the great commandment of love, love of God and love of our neighbor. It sums up the whole Bible. 
the only real failure of a Christian is the failure to love. So let's take a few moments and look into our lives. Maybe at the time we have failed to love one another and love our neighbor and ask God for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you ever wrong any widow or orphan, and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up, and I will kill you with a sword. Then your own wives will be widows, and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of the poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim and I am saved from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be the, my rock, extolled to be God my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Arcadia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. 
for they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our liturgy today presents to us again, as it did last Sunday, how the Pharisees continue to try to entrap Jesus in speech. His adversaries keep triggering questions that intend to put Jesus in compromised positions. First, as we recall last Sunday, it was the question about the census taxes. And then there was the question about the resurrection of the dead. And today, Jesus is asked, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus responds, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, rather than falling into discouragement, he uses these conflicting moments as opportunities to echo his love in the hearts of those who trust in him, making it clear that to please God, not only one thing is needed, not only one thing is necessary, rather the combination of two. First, what pleases God is to love him, and second, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Now, the novelty of this answer, of Jesus' answer, is that he is teaching that both precepts of loving God and loving our neighbor are inseparable. Moreover, they lift and sustain one another, and fused together they weave our faith, becoming the source of our Christian strength. Along with many other precepts, the Pharisees had 613 precepts. So here we have a doctor of the law asking Jesus this question. And we can see that goodness already was widely publicized in the virtue of mercy, of justice, in the old law and the prophets. And the themes of benevolence and the golden rule were already present with the earlier Greek philosophers. It doesn't mean that these other principles, these other precepts are bad or they need to be abolished or that they stop making sense. Rather, they are fulfilled as they serve to guide our Christian living. 
ultimately, we can say that without loving, there is no Christian life. If all precepts, if all actions are not inspired by love, they are not spirited by love, then they are only a resounding noise. When our lives are pleasantly stable, being spirited by love seems automatic and effortless. However, when our days are filled with so much change, so much unrest like we're living today, when the fear of COVID and being confined at home, not knowing when this will be over, doesn't our patience and our harmony among us put to the test? With our presidential elections one step away, our peace and our clarity may become disrupted. These situations of unrest may challenge our spirited, our being spirited by love, of keep, keeping a loving attitude, of being forgiving of the trespasses of the neighbor. Now the question for us today is this, how do we cope, how do we remain being spirited by love? How do we apply that which Jesus is telling us today? We do it precisely by lovingly entrusting our hearts, our souls, and our minds to God. You see, there is no substitute for the Father's love. God is love. It is his nature. He not only pours his love into our hearts, but he also let it flow through us to others so we can genuinely have a loving relationship. This kind of fulfilling love is only found in a trusting relationship with him. As we trust our hearts, as we trust our souls and our minds to him, he plants his love in them. Then as we grow, his love within us matures. He overcomes our negative feelings, enables us to love those we might not typically would and fills the empty places in our hearts. There is no greater love than this. Since God is the true source of love, his love is active. It is by the effects of his love for us that we can experience healing and completeness, giving us the security that helps us to love those who have wronged us, equipping us to be kind toward those who have misconceived or misunderstood us, empowering us to serve others joyfully, enabling us to develop an intimate relationship, driving us to reach other people and to share God's love. Now, wait a minute. It's not that life no longer has difficulties, but those difficulties become bearable and that we can remain steadfast in God in the midst of them. He keeps us hopeful and vibrant, even when we feel depleted and exhausted. On the other hand, Jesus does not stop to define who specifically the neighbor is, because a neighbor is a person whom I meet in the street, on my trip to get the milk at the supermarket, at school, at work. What, is, what Christ is telling us is that it's not about pre-selecting our neighbors, it is about loving our neighbors, not because they are Catholics. Rather, love our neighbors because we are. The unity of these two dimensions, the vertical dimension to love God, and the horizontal dimension of loving of neighbor, crystallize the true disciple of Christ, a disciple where trust is the passport to God's love. May the Virgin Mary help us to be spirited by love by being speedy to forgive and to increase our time to love by entrusting ourselves to God. Invited to welcome and bear witness in our everyday lives our Lord's lesson of lovingly trusting God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our minds, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. God bless us.
You might make the responses now with a lot of faith. It is profession of faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us uh, pray now for all of our needs, the intercessions, the prayers of the faithful. For the church, that our love for God will be marked with the joy from the Holy Spirit and proved by our compassion for the cry of the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a world moved by, motivated to imitate God's active compassion, loving all our neighbors as ourselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military and frontline workers, that the Lord will be their shield and keep them safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those with vulnerable health conditions, Gretchen von Helms, Marta Testa, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, Rose Oliveres, sister of Marilyn Teeter, Grant Duval, Father Al McBride, and those who have died with no one to pray for them, that the face of the Lord will shine upon them. We pray to the Lord. For ourselves, that we may more fully say, I love you, Lord, as we seek God's strength and kindness for our personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us lift up these prayers and petitions and also those that are unspoken and deep in our hearts as we pray the Hail Mary. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, women and, blessed and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen.
my sisters and brothers pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O oh Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to do your glory. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he had freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Robert R. Bishop, John and Ramon, his auxiliaries, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
if you kindly go to the sides, come up by the side aisles, and return by the center aisle. Thank you very much. my strength. Let us stand and pray. <clears throat> May your sacraments, O oh Lord, we pray, 
perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'd like to uh, just remind you that um, on election day, on polling day, we will have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament all day from 7 in the morning until 8 p.m. in the evening. That's a week from this coming Tuesday. And there's a sign up back there towards the back of the church. So if you can drop by sometime and uh, put your name and sign up for a period of time. That would be wonderful. We all know that there's a lot of disharmony in our nation, and we want to pray for peace and harmony. So I think everybody in the parish would like to do that. So I encourage you to be sure to sign up and participate. That would be great. And um, also, uh, we had confirmation today. The sacrament of confirmation was uh, administered by Father Mike Murphy, our pastor. He was a bishop just for two hours at the 10 o'clock mass and again at the 11.30. And we had a great group of young people from the parish who received the gifts of the Holy Spirit, young men and women. It was a joy, it was a wonderful, great, great celebration for these young people. And um, We'd like to thank you all for participating in the Mass this evening. It's good to see more people coming along. That's great. And also those following the celebration of live streaming. And we're very grateful to uh, our, the person that's uh, doing the uh, live streaming for us. Uh, Germaine, thank you very, very much. And all of our liturgical ministers. And uh, Deacon Federico, beautiful singing. Very good, Jean. And, and Pat, terrific. It really lifts our minds and our spirits. The singing, very, very important. Uh, from time to time, we have uh, problems with our microphones. How many people were able to hear us clearly this evening? Just put up your hands. Very good. Number of people that could not hear? <laughs> One person, okay. That's pretty good. Thank you very, very much. And have a safe and a healthy weekend and the week ahead. Take care of yourselves and one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, radiating the joy of the gospel. Thanks be to God.